Isn't that awesome? Hey, thank you, Pernice family, for sharing that with us. And uh, what, what a great just kind of Father's Day video, but also leading us into what we're talking about today, uh, which is the divine legacy. And so thank you, guys. I want you to know that as great as that video was, it was so much better to be there with them and to be talking to them through this and just hearing what they were saying. It was just one of those moments where God was there, and it, it, was, it was worship to be there and talk through that. So thank you guys for doing that. And, and today I just want to say Happy Father's Day to everyone. I want to say especially, I have a, my, my dad snuck in first service. I'm glad he's not in here this service because it made me cry a whole bunch. Uh, but I, I'm, I've been blessed with a wonderful father. And also I have a great father-in-law over there, Jerry. Uh, thank you for being such a great father-in-law. Listen, I know that um, not everyone has that experience. I know that Father's Day can be tough for some people. Maybe um, you've lost a father or, or had a difficult relationship. I just want to point you today to the truth that we have a father in heaven. No matter what your experience is, whether it's been great or it's been difficult, we have a father in heaven that loves you more than you will ever know. And so it's great to be here and worship together. I also just want to share with you, uh, I had the opportunity this week to represent our district and our church at General Assembly. General Assembly is a gathering of Nazarenes from all over the world. We're in 164 world areas. And so people from all over the world come together and we do the business of the church. And so it was a great week of spending time voting on things and worshiping. And, and it was awesome. It was my first time to be a delegate, and it was a real blessing to be a part of. I, I want to share some news with you. Probably the biggest thing that happened is we, in the church, I know some of you aren't real familiar with the Church of the Nazarene, but we have six general superintendents. They're kind of our highest leaders, and two of them retired this year, Dr. Graves and Dr. Dwart are retiring this year, and so they'll finish up their term here soon. So one of the biggest things we had to do was to elect two new general superintendents, and I didn't get elected. So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I probably won't ever get elected to that, but it was a blessing to get to be a part of it. And I wanted to tell you that we do have two new general superintendents. Uh, we have Scott Daniels from the Nampa College Church. He's the pastor, was the pastor of the Nampa College Church and will be taking over as the 44th general superintendent. And then we elected Christian Sarmiento, who is from South America. And I told you, we are a global church and he becomes our 45th general superintendent. I love that our church, one of the coolest things is coming together with people from all over the world and running into them and talking to them and meeting them and worshiping together. And I love that we are a global church. We, we, talked, we sang it earlier, all the earth will shout your praise. I want you to know today that there are people all over the world praising God. Not just Nazarenes, but all sorts of people all over the world praising God. His church is a global church. And I love that our church, our Nazarene church, is a global church as well. So praise God for that. It was a great week at General Assembly. Today we're going to continue our series, Divine Legacy. And this series is all about the fact that last series was divine impact. It was the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. That when God works, it changes us, it transforms us. Now we're talking about the divine legacy. That, that each and every one of us, when God works in our hearts and lives, when God is transforming us, we are called to pour that out to others, to leave a legacy. Now you can leave a lot of different types of legacies. Uh, you, you can leave wealth, you can leave you know, a, a good name, the most important legacy you can leave, the people coming after you, is a relationship, a knowledge, a faith in Jesus Christ. Listen, wealth will pass away, um, power and names will fade away, but if you want to leave a divine legacy, that happens as we pass along our faith in Jesus Christ. So that's what we're talking about the first week Pastor Grace shared with us and we talked about divine connections that each and every one of us, listen to me very carefully, if you are a follower of Christ, you are called to pour out into other people what God is doing in your life. None of us are meant to just sit there and collect it, we are meant to pour that out to others. And so you need to have people in your life that you are pouring into. That was the question, who are you pouring into? Last week, we talked about divine markers. 
And, and we looked at the story of the Israelites. When they crossed into the promised land, God said, go grab stones out of the Jordan River and set them out to remind you of what I've done. And last week we talked about the fact that if we can remember what he's done for us, it'll give us the confidence and the trust to face anything that we have to face today. Today we're going to talk about divine conversations. It's not just about what he has done for us. We need to be talking about what he is doing for us and in us today. And so I want to start with a question for you, and I want this, you can share this with the person next to you if you want. I know some of you don't like that. You can just think about this, whatever. But I want you to think about this question. What is it, through the last week, through the last year, through the last day, what is it that you've thought about and talked about the most? What is it that's occupied your mind and occupied your conversation most in the last day, in the last week, in the last year? Think about that. What is it that's been at the top of your mind and the top of your conversation every single day? The reason I ask this is it matters what you think about and what you talk about. Maybe, for, hey, the Reds are hot right now, aren't they? I think seven wins in a row. How many of you are talking about the Reds a lot? Okay. Two of you, great. <laughs> really exciting stuff. <laughs> We're 500. What, what is it that you're thinking? Maybe work you know, consumes your life. Maybe you're always thinking and talking about work. Maybe you're into the news or politics or current events. Maybe you're a big uh, TV watcher or movie watcher. What is it that really occupies your mind and your conversation? Today, I want you to see from God's word that, that what we should think about and what we should talk about all the time is Jesus Christ. And so we're talking about a divine legacy. What is it that you think about? Uh, why don't you stand with me? We're going to read, we're gonna read two passages, passages today. We're going to start in Philippians chapter 4. This is Paul's letter to the church. And we're going to be there. And then later, we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, which is where Moses is giving commands to the Israelites. But you'll see a common theme in both of them that we should be thinking about and we should be talking about who God is and what he's done. So let's read Philippians chapter 4. I'll read it. You can follow along on the screen. Starting in verse 4 and reading through verse 9. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, let me say that again, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true... Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. You can have a seat. So, so we start here in Paul's letter to the church. And I want you to see a couple things. Through both scriptures, there, there's common themes that we're to think and we're to talk about who God is and what he's done. But there's also this, this thing that we see in both scriptures that there is a cause and effect. Paul says here, if you will talk to God, if you will pray continually, then the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. And then he says, think about what's good, what's right, what's true, all of those things. He says, if you do that then the peace of God will be with you. So I want you to know today that what you think about and what you talk about makes a difference in your life. It changes your life. And God blesses those who are focused, who are in relationship with him. This isn't prosperity gospel. I'm not talking about you getting rich. I'm talking about the peace of God being poured out on your life when you think about and you pray to him. So three things we're going to see through these two texts. Number one, we need to talk to Jesus. We need to talk to Jesus. We serve a living God. And Paul says at the beginning of this that no matter what you're going through, you need to talk to Jesus. Number two, we need to think about Jesus. 
We need to think about him. And number three, we need to talk about Jesus to each other. So we'll see those in the text. We'll start with the first one, talking to Jesus. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The words immediately preceding this say, the Lord is near. Now, in this text, that probably is referring to the the second coming of Christ, but there is this idea, this implication that, that God is near to us always. And so, no matter what situation or circumstance you're in, it says, pray to him, talk to him, because he's near, and he will give you peace in every situation. Listen, no matter what you're going through, maybe some of you have had a really tough week, Maybe some of you are dealing with some really painful stuff. Maybe you've had a great week and you're just on top of the world. In every situation, we are to pray and to talk to Jesus. He's with us. See, unfortunately, sometimes we, we view our faith as kind of a, a ritual or a static thing. Maybe you come to church on, on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock and you... You pray then, maybe you pray before your meals, maybe right before bed, maybe when you're just really in in the midst of something difficult and you know you need help, maybe you cry out. But I think in the church, we struggle with this, that our God is with us every single moment of every single day. If you are a follower of Christ, you are filled with the very Spirit of God and He's with you. And we shouldn't compartmentalize our relationship with God to certain moments of the week. Paul says in every situation, you need to be praying. You need to be talking to God. Because he's with you. He's always with you. Here's the thing. The more you focus on him, the more you pray, the more you're going to realize that God is active in your life. If you're focused on TV, if you're focused on sports, if you're focused on the Reds, if you're focused on work, you will miss what God's doing in your life. But if you're constantly in conversation, in prayer, you're going to see that God is always moving. So here's a quick example. Teens, uh, any of you guys going to NYC in a few weeks, two or three weeks? NYC, Nazarene Youth Conference, that's a big thing. It's kind of like General Assembly. It's for all the teens in the United States. They go to one place. I think it's Tampa this year. That's pretty awesome. Tampa's a pretty good place to go. But all the teens go together and they gather in one place. And I remember my parents telling me this really weird thing that they did. My parents were praying for me before NYC happened. And they had this really weird, specific prayer. They prayed that a woman of God would be at NYC that one day I would end up marrying. Very specific, very weird prayer. I wasn't even thinking about that. I I was just wanting to have a good time and go have fun. But my parents were praying for me long before NYC that at that NYC in Toronto in 1999, that, that my wife would be there and would be a woman of God. Well, in 1999 in Toronto, there was this girl named Megan Dockery from Westchester Church of the Nazarene, and she got put up on that screen. I didn't even notice. I, I, don't even, I, I don't even know what I was doing. But later, I got put up on the very same screen. And two years later, my wife and I would meet and end up getting married. And she was a woman of God. And God's prayer, or, I mean, my parents' prayer was answered by God. See, if, if they hadn't been praying that prayer, they wouldn't have probably been thinking about the fact that God was working all along, but when you're praying, when you're focused, you'll see God work. God is always at work. I promise you this. If you will will seek him and you will pray, you will see him working in your life. He's always working. And so the more we think, the more we talk to him, the more we see that he's with us. See, last week we talked about the stones. We talked about spiritual markers that remind us of what he has done. It's not enough just to remember what he has done. We need to know what he is doing. 
Paul says no matter what situation you're in, no matter what's going on, you need to be talking to God. You need to be praying because he is working. And and so we're talking about divine legacy. If we're going to pour a divine legacy into others, we have to have a living, active relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't want to, how many of you want to pour in a stale, boring faith to the people that come after you? No, no hands. Good job, guys. That's the right vote right there. We want to, if, if we're going to have a divine legacy, we want to show others Jesus and the fact that he's alive and with us and moving in our hearts and lives. So the first thing is we, we talk to Jesus. Listen, I, I want you to know this. You don't have to just pray on Sunday morning when we say to pray. You don't have to just pray before your meal or before bed. You can pray all the time. God is with you. The second thing he says is that you need to be thinking about Jesus. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. We need to think about what's pure and right. What this is really saying is we need to think about God and we need to think about what God is giving us, what God is doing, because that's what's pure and right and good and holy. I asked you earlier, what is it that you think and you talk about? What we should be thinking about is what's pure and what's right. See, what we think about, what we think about matters in our lives. Have you ever noticed that two people can go to the same church service or the same concert or the same event and they can walk away with two very different thoughts on what happened? So I went to General Assembly last week and and I want to share this with you. uh, We live in 2023. It's a a difficult time um, for unity and peace, isn't it? Our world is not really very unified and peaceful. There's a lot of brokenness and a lot of division. And I went to General Assembly, and I'm going to be honest with you, I I had some concern that that the church would struggle because of where we are in the world today. There's a lot of churches that are struggling and divided. i got to tell you, praise God, I felt that, that we had a unity in Christ. I felt like the Spirit was moving, and I didn't feel the division and brokenness that we see in the world around us. I felt a church that came together and we didn't agree on everything and everything wasn't perfect, but we loved God and we worshiped him and we were one together all over the world. It's funny because I came back and like three or four people came up to me and said, oh man, that must have been a tough week. I heard it was terrible. No, it wasn't. I was there every day. It was beautiful. There, there, was, there was none of that. I mean, sure, there were moments, but, but God was there, and we were unified, and we were one, and the things that are dividing our world did not divide us. We worshiped him and praised him. But here's the thing. If you go in with one thought, if you're thinking about God and what he's doing, you would have seen the beauty of what happened there. But if you went in there looking for trouble, well, you're, you're going to find trouble. What we think about matters. If we focus on stressful things, we're going to be stressed. If we focus on negative, we're going to be negative. Paul says, focus on what's good and what's right. There's a couple of quotes I want to share with you. Whatever we focus our attention on is what will dominate our thoughts. And if our thoughts are dominated by the things of this world, then we're going to get worldly results. We need to focus on God and get godly results. There's a book that we read a while back. It's by Craig Rochelle. It's a really good book. I'd recommend it. It's called Winning the War for Your Mind. If you've struggled with your thoughts, if you've struggled with negativity or anything, I would recommend that you check that book out, Winning the War for Your Mind. In it, Craig Rochelle says this, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. What we think shapes who we are. Listen, if you focus on bitter situations, you will become bitter. 
But if you focus on what God's doing and the good things, if you focus on what you have to be thankful for, you will be joyful and, and you will have a heart of praise. What you think matters. And so, so Paul says, whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is lovely, think about those things. Listen to me. We need to talk to God. He's with us. We need to talk to Jesus. He is active in our lives. And we need to think about what's good and right and holy. If there are thoughts, worldly thoughts, that are dominating your mind, you need to surrender those to Jesus. And you need to ask him to transform your mind to see his goodness and his love and his grace. The result? The peace of God will be with you. Earlier it says, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and your mind. And now it says, the peace of God will be with you. Th this term, guard, is like a military term, that it guards you as if there's an enemy coming to try to steal your good thoughts, your, your relationship with God. But if we focus on him and we talk to him and we think about what's pure and good, th then God's peace protects us from what would come to steal our joy and our faith. Think about what's good. When we focus on God's word and presence, we're going to experience God's blessings no matter the circumstance. He says in every situation, in every situation, talk to God, think about what's good, and you will have the peace of God. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't know what you're dealing with in your life, but we need the peace of God, the wholeness of God. In our lives. So, number one, talk to Jesus. Number two, think about Jesus. And number three, and this is important for us, we need to talk about Jesus to each other. This is where the legacy piece really comes in. Way too often, we talk about the Reds and we talk about work and we talk about politics and we talk about all these things, but, but we don't talk about Jesus enough. Even in the church. Are you awake? Come on. We don't talk about Jesus enough in the church. We don't talk about what God's done in the church enough. It's easy to come here every week and run into people that you see every week and, and talk about, you know, chit-chat about life. But, but we need to be talking about who God is and what he's done. We're a people of God. We've received his grace and his love, and we need to pour that out to others to do that. We've got to share it. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21. This is Moses t talking to the Israelites. This is a word from God here. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on, the, on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many are as the days that the heavens are above the earth. This is the same thing you just heard from Paul years and years later, speaking to the church, is what you're hearing from Moses to the Israelites here. Keep yourself focused. He says, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Keep focused. And he says, talk about them, share them. In the church, we used to have a thing called testimonies. I know some of you are nodding your head and you're probably getting a little bit upset right now because you miss testimonies, right? Every once in a while, I'll have someone come up to me and say, hey, why don't we have testimonies anymore? And I say, well, you're not getting up and testifying. <laughs> I've never once stopped someone from testifying. <laughs> Praise God for testimony. We need to be talking about what he's done. And listen, it doesn't have to be in a service. When we walk out of here, when you're at lunch, when you're at work, you need to be talking about who God is and what he's done. It, what does it say here? Teach them to your children, talking about them when you're at church in Sunday school. It doesn't say that, does it? It says when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up, talk about Jesus. We don't talk about Jesus enough. I don't talk about Jesus enough. We need to talk about what God's doing in our lives. And if we're talking to him and we're thinking about him, we should be talking about him. 
That's what we're called to do, church, to pass along our faith, our relationship with God to those that come after us. Talk about Jesus. He says, fix these words in my heart. I, I love this. It says, tie them as symbols on your hands. Any of you have symbols on your hands that remind you to talk about Jesus? I'm still wearing our, our bracelet from January because it's a reminder. So I, I don't think there's any foreheads that are tattooed in here or anything with, uh, with something to remind you. Maybe, I don't know. But, but it says, fix them on your hands, put them on your forehead. It, it says, teach them to your children. It says, put them on your door frames, write them on your door frames or your houses and your gates. I was looking last night around the house and I saw scriptures that we have hanging up that that talk about, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the word of God up. Listen, this says you need to put it everywhere and you need to talk about it. Be reminded of who he is and what he's done so that you can point others to Jesus. That's the divine legacy. Listen to me. The best leadership is to point people to the best leader, which is Jesus Christ. You got, there's some phenomenal leaders in our church. Some of you are really great. I loved the Pernice's video. I loved hearing what they're doing as a family. Praise God for that. The best thing you can do is not to be the leader you're pointing to, but to point people to Jesus Christ, who is the only eternal leader. So point people to Jesus. We do that by talking about Jesus. So three things. Three things that I want to call you to practically do. Number one, we're supposed to talk to Jesus. I want you to make space in your schedule and your mind to pray and worship. I know we're all busy. I know there's a lot of things that are demanding our attention. You need to set some things in place that will help you focus on him and pray to him. Set some habits. Maybe it's as you're driving. Maybe it's in the shower, maybe it's after certain things that happen, you need to set habits in your life that you can talk to him and worship him. Make sure that you're worshiping every day. Listen, you don't have to just pray and worship 11 to 12 Sunday morning. God is with you Tuesday at 4 a.m. I, I know I've said before he's probably not, but he is. At 4 a.m., God is with you. At 2 a.m., God is with you. At 7 p.m., God is with you. Even when you're half asleep, God is with you. We need to be worshiping him. Find some ways. Make some time, some space to worship God and pray every day. The second thing, put some reminders of God's presence in your life. Put them everywhere. Put them on your door frames. Put them on your wrist. Put them anywhere. Whatever you've got to do to keep yourself focused on him, put reminders of his presence all over the place. One of the things I used to do when I was trying to lose weight and get in shape is I would, I would take a marker and every day I would weigh myself and I would write what I weighed on the, on the mirror. It's that's, that's hard to not keep yourself accountable when it's written every day. The first thing you do is get up and see it. We need to do that with our faith in Christ. We need to put his word everywhere. We need to put reminders everywhere. Find ways to keep it in front of you. He says, tie them as symbols to your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and gates. Put it everywhere. Make sure that you're thinking about Jesus. And, and the third thing is focus on him in your conversations. Be a person that focuses on him and talks about him. I've got some friends, one of my best friends, Kevin Todd, every time we get together, we're not talking sports or movies. We're talking about Jesus. Praise God for that. I've got a lot of good friends that are that. I want you not only to have friends like that in your life, but I want you to be someone who talks about Jesus and points others to Jesus. One of the things that Craig Rochelle mentions in his book, he's talking about our thoughts. He, he talks about a thing called a thought audit where what you do is you take a whole week and you write down all of the thoughts you have so that at the end of the week you can go back and see what you're What's dominating your mind? I want, I'm going to suggest this to you. Maybe do a conversation audit this week with your family, with your coworkers, with your friends, the people that you're pouring into. Just write down the things that you talk about. Write it down through the week, and at the end of the week, look back 
And my prayer is that we will be talking about Jesus and who he is and what he's doing more than we're talking about seven straight baseball wins or what's happening in politics. God is with us and God's moving. Worship team, you can come up here. So here's what I want to do. Today I want to put this into practice. We see three things. Number one, we need to be talking to Jesus. We need to be thinking about Jesus, and we need to be talking about Jesus. I want us to practice those first two now. We're going to sing a wonderful song called I Speak Jesus. I want you to go ahead and stand with me. Listen, I know that everybody in here is in a different spot, and I know there are some people in here this morning that came in with a heavy heart. I know that some people came in this morning dealing with chaos or difficulty in their lives. I know that some of you are probably on top of the world and things are going great. Paul says, no matter what situation you're in, take it to God. 